Hey guys, Paramax here. So today, I want to explore building inverters. So if we just take our phone here, how to make an inverter. Yeah, none of these look particularly simple. This one looks pretty decent though. Oh, uh, we've got a couple of transistors here. We've got R1 and R2, and then we have a little transformer. Basically, it just sets up this um, A-stable multi-vibrator type circuit. You've probably seen a very similar circuit like this with the wig-wag flashing LEDs, except in this case we use a transformer, and we provide the DC through the center tap. Of course, the emitters are connected to ground, and you get your output. Seems pretty simple. Let's build this one first. So the first thing we're going to need is a suitable transformer. So I've got this small unit here. Uh, this is a transformer pulled out of a old audio amplifier thing. But we're going to be using this in reverse. So we're going to be getting high voltage out of this end by feeding low voltage DC into this end. We take a multimeter here, put it onto the AC range, and measure the voltage on these taps. We get yeah about 16 volts. Yeah, 16.2 volts there, and across the taps, we get 32 volts. So this is clearly a 15 volt transformer, and we are going to have to supply probably closer to 18 volts in order to really get this thing to produce the right output voltage. All right, I went ahead and printed off a schematic diagram of what we are going to be building. I don't have these exact transistors, but since they're rated 60 volts and 10 amps, you can substitute these with the classic 2N3055 transistor. And if I pull out my transistors, I've got plenty of MJE 3055s and TIP 3055s. The TIP 3055s are these bigger ones, but I'm not going to use these because I happen to have these 2N3771 transistors, and I've also got this Westinghouse one. So we've got our victims, I mean our transistors picked out. So it looks like we need to connect our emitters together. So if you look at this transistor, you can see that one of these pins is the emitter and the other pin is going to be the base. And the collector being this pin here and this pin here. So the collector is actually going to be the body of this transistor. I honestly kind of hate the TO3 package, but it does do a good job of dissipating heat if you bolt it to a big hunk of metal. So I should probably mount these to a heatsink, uh, but for now I'm just going to do this uh, kind of open air. Kind of dip these transistors in the flux, get the pins tinned up. Circuit calls for 220 ohm resistors, so I'll go ahead and solder these on. It looks like this transistor base connects up to the 220 and up to the collector of the other transistor. We'll just kind of wrap that around there like that. We'll use an alligator clip to hold that on and then we'll do kind of the same thing on this side. We will connect that to our transformer, then connect one end to the base of this. Get that in there, kind of clamp that in there. All right, so our circuit is basically complete. And for our load, uh, we are going to try a variety of light bulbs here. So here I have a three and a half watt LED. Uh, then we have this really cheap Utilitech light bulb, 750 lumens, nine watts, I think. Does it say nine watts on it? Then we have uh, what I imagine is a 15 watt CFL, no, 14 watts. And then we have a 45 watt incandescent uh, resistive load, whereas these are going to be probably capacitive dropper uh, or some sort of uh, electronic inverter. Uh, and then finally, we have the biggest light bulb of all which is this crazy 6120 lumen, 130 volt, 300 watt incandescent light bulb. This thing is massive. I can't believe they still sell these things. This thing's a real power hog right there, jeez. So we got the circuit wired up, connected up to our transformer. We are going to provide power to this middle pin right here. Ground is going to connect uh, between those emitters. Supposed to have a fuse in there. We're not gonna deal with the fuse for now. We have a current limited power supply. And we've got our light bulb holder here. Anyway, let's uh, let's get on with the experiment. I think we'll start off with the CFL. Let's go ahead and connect powers. Then ground is gonna go over here somewhere. Ooh, it works. Doesn't sound happy though. Yeah, drawing about 1.3 amps. It does work. Doesn't sound very sinusoidal, and I think if we probe that with a scope, we'll, we're gonna see what this really looks like. But we have light. Let's go ahead and... Oh, whoa. What? <laughs> the frequency changes. Yeah, so that's one reason this circuit sucks. Let's try the lowest power bulb here. This one should work without an issue. Oh, 
honestly, the sound of that reminds me of like a generator. Put a load on it and it loads it down, bogs it down. Anyway, this bulb works. It doesn't really load down the circuit at all. That doesn't surprise me. Let's try the, uh, the other LED bulb. Yeah, this one works too. It's actually not very bright at all. Yeah, this is, I don't know if it comes across on the camera at all, but this is definitely not as bright as it should be. Ugh. Transistors, whoop, that's giving me a bit of a shock there. Yeah, I can feel that. That's definitely a tickle of shocking me. Yeah, yeah. We're gonna have to probe that and see how much voltage is coming out of that. But um, yeah, definitely we're getting quite a good bit of EMF, uh, back EMF, that's not gonna be very nice to our transistors. Let's try the halogen. Oh, it's actually 53. Okay, let's try that. It works! <laughs> that's actually pretty impressive. Yeah, you can feel the heat this thing puts out. Frequency definitely changed and the current went way up. All right, I got a couple more light bulbs. I have this other LED. Uh, this is actually a much higher quality LED. Uh, this one is rated 5.5 watts. This one should light up without an issue. Let's go ahead and turn on the power supply again. No current load, 700 milliamps, and it doesn't light up at all. It's not happy with that at all. Is it still clipped on? Yeah, it's, it's, just, it's just not having it. So it is powering it, but this light bulb is just not happy with the quality of the electricity that is coming out of that. So let's go ahead and try the 150 watt. This is a traditional incandescent. Whoa. What is that? So yeah, as soon as you screw this one in, the frequency of this self-oscillating circuit shoots way up. And let's see what happens to the power draw as I screw this in. Yeah, it's, it's not happy. Okay, I think we found the limit of this circuit. And just for good measure, we'll try the big bulb. The big bulb. Does it even like try to light up? Yeah, nothing. No dice. And are our transistors fine? Let's turn the circuit off before I shock myself. All right, let's see. Ooh. Yeah, they're pretty warm. These definitely need to be heat synced. Yeah, if I had to guess, I would say they're around 60 to 70 degrees right now, which is fine. I mean, these things should be able to handle up to like 120 degrees uh, Celsius. Uh, the resistors. Resistors are a little warm. Okay, yeah, so that's uh, that's about what you can expect to get out of this circuit. All right, guys, so I went ahead and beefed up the circuit and doubled the base current to these transistors by having the base resistance. And my theory is that that's gonna drive them harder into saturation. That means we're going to be able to push and pull more current through this transformer, and we should be able to achieve higher power at the output. Previously, we were running into the limit of this power supply. It can only supply about five amps, and that's not really enough to test the higher wattage light bulbs. So I figured we're going to step this up by adding a NICAD battery pack. This thing should be able to supply five to seven amps. Got a cheapo multimeter monitoring the voltage across the NICAD battery, and the UNI-T is going to measure the current into the circuit. On the secondary side of the transformer, we've got the Fluke multimeter measuring the voltage as well as the current delivered to the light bulb. This thing is really acting up. What I don't know what that was about. Hello? What are you doing? Are you alive? Why does that have an HFE symbol? What? see. I have corroded contacts on this piece of shit. What is going on? And I was just dead. 
Come on, I expect that out of the cheat multimeter, not you. Well, it seems fine now. All right, where were we? So the fluke multimeter is going to monitor the voltage delivered to the light bulb. And apparently this really dodgy amp probe AM220 is going to monitor the current delivered to the light bulb. Let's go ahead and proceed with the testing. So with no load at the output, we have a voltage of 14.2 volts from our battery and about one amp being delivered into the circuit. Now that's quite a lot of current being delivered into no load. And I believe a lot of that has to do with some losses in the transformer because this transformer core does get a little bit warm. And also these resistors are getting mighty hot. And anyway, we basically have an average voltage of 15 volts across each one of these resistors and it's 110 ohms. So yeah, go figure. It also looks like we have a slightly low voltage on the output. All right, let's add the first load, the three and a half watt LED. The current is quite low. The voltage hasn't changed much on the output and the current on the input hasn't really changed much. The frequency of this transformer hasn't changed much and the voltage hasn't changed much. So yeah, this light bulb does nothing. Moving on to the next light bulb, we have the Utilitec. You can see this light bulb draws quite a bit more current, voltage sags a little bit more, and these reacted a little bit as well. Moving on with the 14 and a half watt CFL, you can hear the transformer audibly changes frequency. The voltage sagged quite a bit, and the current is about 117 milliamps. You could probably expect to drive a 100 watt light bulb without too much of an issue, as well as the lower power halogen bulbs. Just for shits though, let's try the power of the big bulb. Give it a bit of power. That's interesting. So short circuit, it actually draws less current than the 150 watt bulb did. And you can see the output voltage is quite low. So this transformer is definitely overloaded. It is slowly rising though as the filament uh, starts to glow. And we're pushing about 660 milliamps into this. All right, I'm gonna disconnect that. All right guys, so this nightcap battery is absolute garbage. It can't supply more than a couple of amps before the voltage drops out on it. The voltage on this sags down to around 10 volts. That's useless, we're throwing that out. And we're gonna replace it with the drill battery. Uh, this thing should be able to deliver quite a bit more current. So now if we just wire this thing up, we get 145 volts at the output. That's, that's a lot better. All right, now let's give the 50 watt halogen bulb a try. So that is a little bit brighter and we are delivering a little bit more power into there. So you see our voltage dropped to about 112 volts. Yeah, about steady state four amps. Now the bulb we were having trouble with before, the 150 watt power of the circuit. <laughs> yeah, that actually works quite a bit better. Uh, now we're closer to, well, we had a peak there of 70 volts, uh, 1.1 amps uh, into the circuit. Oh, damn. So we're pushing about 8.2 amps into the circuit and our voltage dropped quite a bit. Now, what is the open circuit voltage? Yeah, 18 volts. So yeah, we're draining this battery really fast. Uh, yep. Just out of curiosity, let's try the big bulb. Very high frequency. Is the frequency gonna drop? Yes! We are getting... Actually, that seems to be maybe a little bit worse than before. I'm turning that off. Transistor is getting hot. Ooh, yes, they are getting really hot. So <laughs> we don't want to be running this thing into a, what is basically a short circuit for too long. These transistors stay in the linear region for far too long because of how high frequency the circuit tries to run at. That's not great. Now this was a fairly short run, so my transformer core is not too warm. These resistors are still quite warm from that experiment. All right guys, so we have the oscilloscope hooked up here. We are going to have the yellow trace hooked up to the collector of one of these transistors. We've got the blue trace in the middle here hooked up to this current clamp meter, which is measuring the current on the primary side of the transformer. And lastly, we have the magenta trace hooked up to the base of that same resistor. For this run, we're just gonna use the 45 watt bulb. All right, contact. So pulling 3.18 amps at 20 volts input, we're getting 125 volts at the output, and you can see what our waveforms look like. It looks like the voltage on the emitter of one of the transistors does what looks like mostly a square wave. 
uh, it looks like our current through the transformer uh, shoots up to some medium value and it stays at that medium value right up until the uh, transformer core saturates at which point you can see it shoot way up and then once it shoots way up you can see the circuit switches state and the other transistor starts to conduct and during this period this transistor is held off and while this transistor is being held low it makes sense that the collector of the transistor would go high to the other supply rail. Keep in mind that while this is only one division, this is a 50 volt per division scale. So this is sitting at close to 50 volts. And that would make sense if we're feeding this thing 20 volts, uh, half the time it's at zero volts, and half the time it's gonna be at double the supply voltage. The average of that has to be the supply voltage because transformers are AC coupled. You can also see the voltage on the base of the transistors. Now what sticks out to me is just how far up the current shoots before the circuit switches state. So now watch what happens when I remove the light bulb. You can see the circuit is now running at a higher frequency, it looks like. And the other thing to notice is the current is still peaking at the same value. So there's basically no current right up until the core of this transformer saturates and then the current shoots way up. Then the current seems to reach some sort of threshold uh, before it switches state. All right, let's power up the 150 watt bulb. Contact. If I leave this hooked up for too long, watch what happens. Actually, let's go ahead and unfreeze that in screen. Capture this. You can see this is a much heavier load and we're drawing much more current on our primary. Our primary current is uh, eight amps and it's going out, going out. Uh, <laughs> what? And now it's drawing less current, but it's, it's, everything is getting really, really hot. So let's turn that off. So in the next video, I want to cover how the circuit works, uh, discuss all of the problems with this thing, because it's got a lot of issues, and maybe discuss some ways that we could probably make this a little bit better. And uh, with that, see you guys next time.